Today's a big one. I am going to be going through my entire philodendron collection. It's going to be a lot. There's a lot of exciting plants to talk about today. So grab yourself a hot or a cold drink and enjoy. What is going on my planting people? My name is Lithius and welcome to Roots Ready. And we're going to kick it off right here with the most iconic, the most incredible, the jewel in the crown. This one right here, this is my Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. And look at that. It is such a gorgeous little seedling of a plant. I'm not sure if it is actually a seedling. I think it was uh, a propagation actually, but a very, very small, small propagation. Um, but I only recently showed this, this plant in a video that came out last week. So it's the one before this one. Um, and in that time, I showed you that this leaf was unfurling. And look at that already, guys. It's already so much larger than it was in the previous video. It's about the same size as the previous leaf. However, uh, that petiole there is a lot, lot shorter. You can see it there compared to that. Um, and the reason for that is um, it's now living in my grow tent behind me and it's getting a lot of light, direct light right on top of it. I've also got some uh, mirrors in there just to keep that light around the plant. So it doesn't feel the need to stretch out to find um, the light anymore. So it's growing a lot more compact, which is great. So, you know, who doesn't love a nice full compact plant? So there we go, it's still hardening off. The leaf is still a little bit soft. The texture of these leaves are how can I explain? It's kind of thick. It's a bit rubbery. It literally feels like rubber. Um, it's not as thin. It doesn't feel very delicate, which is great because this plant did cost me a pretty penny. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's, it's currently living in moss. It's doing great. I can actually finally see some roots on the side of the pot. So let me, let me bring you in for a closer look. Right there, that's one root if the camera was, would allow me to show it to you. And there's another one over there. Um, and that's all I've noticed, really. And that's <laughs> that's just literally in the last week. I've only, it's been one week since I showed you guys this plant and it's already growing so well. I couldn't be happier, this was a big risk. One of the biggest risks in my plant collecting journey. And I'm so glad that it's paying off. So I hope this one, the Spirit of Sancti, the rarest plant, um, I think there's only about eight left in the world, in the wild. There's a lot more in cultivation or in private collections than they are in the wild. So I feel a big responsibility to have this one and to really take care of it and give it the best environment that I can. And I'm glad to show that it is doing well. So I hope this has whet your appetite for what's to come because it's going to get better. So I think we're going to work our way up in terms of the sizes, starting with the smallest all the way up to the biggest one. And uh, next up, I guess, is my Philodendron 69686. It's a gorgeous little plant with, I'll put this one down for a second, with the cutest little lobes. Look at that, just so pretty. When I got this plant, it was absolutely tiny. So I'm really glad to see that it's come this far. It's given me that real sort of almost horse head type of shape. Uh, little arrow. <laughs> it's really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, I nearly killed this plant. It was in a tiny, tiny pot, maybe like a two inch or something. And it was in there for ages. So it grew all of this growth, uh, including these ones as well. So it's quite like a long plant. Um, and I decided to up pot it. And when I did that, I actually pulled the plant out. And I think unfortunately, actually damaged quite a lot of the roots in doing that. So um, I noticed that this growth over here, just stopped growing and this plant was quite a rapid grower in my opinion it was growing quite regularly i was getting about a leaf a month um which was great and i thought that growth rate was fantastic and by this point i should have had been on my you know second leaf since putting it into a new pot but that didn't happen so i decided to check it and unfortunately most if not all of the roots had rotted so this meant that i had to jump right into it and try to save this plant to make sure that it didn't die on me really. So what I did, I took off all the roots that I could 
um, gave it a hydrogen peroxide soak just to stop any of that bacteria from spreading any further. Um, and then I was left with a really, really long, you know, uh, stem with loads of nodes on it. So I decided to propagate it and I've got another, just a node. There's nothing on it. So I didn't bother to show it to you guys today. It's literally just a node. Um, that's propagating away. Um, and I made uh, two other cuttings. So this is the base cutting uh, and this is the top cutting. And I'm glad to say that they have both rooted. I had this one uh, in this uh, grow tent as well, but nothing was really happening. So I put it in a humidity bag. So super, super high humidity. And it was in there with one of my other Hoyas that was rooting. Um, and I've checked it today and look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that juicy juicy root is already sticking out of the bottom so i'm really happy about that so i pulled it out now it's just sitting on my plant shelf in my bedroom this one i'm actually going to sell on um i don't need three if the other one does take off so i'm actually going to sell this one on so you can see there's a growth point right there near, just under my finger so that's great so that means it's really enjoying life it's going to do very, very well and hopefully make someone else really, really happy because I thought this was a great one to add to the collection. On the top cutting, though, have a look at this. I noticed it today, like literally um, I went in just to look at what's happening and I noticed right here, boom, a long, juicy root. <laughs> that is great to see. It does mean, oh, there's even two. I didn't even notice. So there's literally one above and then the longer one below so there's one here and one just down here so i'm really glad that this plant is really rooting up i think it's going to take over this pot in no time and hopefully just continue on the trajectory that it was uh it was going in before it experienced the root rot my fault really but yeah this is the philodendron 69686 look at that so next up is this plant right here. This is my Paraiso Verde. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not really feeling this plant at the moment. It's I bought it uh, hoping that I could encourage some variegation on this plant. If you have seen the variegated ones, oh, 10 out of 10, they are gorgeous. They've got this amazing speckled look to them with sort of that green splashing on this sort of white leaf. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I bought this one thinking that I could encourage it to go back to that sort of um, uh, variegated color. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. I've tried everything. I've tried heat. I've tried cold. I've tried to. I've tried multiple different substrates. I've tried lots of light. I've tried a little bit of light. Currently, it's in not that much light, um, and nothing is bringing um, that that variegation for me. In this leaf over here, can you see? You can kind of see a little bit of that blotchiness just there um, and I was hoping that was the sign of or the start of that variegation coming through but then since then it, it sort of reverted it went back to this it really really bad I had to help these two leaves actually out of the caterpillar because it just wouldn't budge right it just wouldn't like it was just stuck every time it grew a leaf well these two anyway it was just getting stuck so I was getting a bit nervous um, and I had it in my again in this grow tent over here and now it just seems to be doing okay. These past two leaves have definitely sized up. This one is still hardening off, so it might even get just a little bit bigger. But I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am going for a, a plant purge at the moment. And I think this one, I'm, I'm going to have to let it go. Um, unfortunately, uh, it you just have to know when your plant is bringing you joy or not. And this one, not really. Uh, it doesn't excite me. Uh, as much as I thought it would, if it had some variegation, you know, hooray, it would have been an amazing plant to have. But at the moment, I can't say that it excites me. It is in Lekka. It has been in Moss before. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. But yeah, this is it. This is the uh, yeah Philodendron Paraiso Verde. Um, it's an okay plant. It's an okay plant. Imagine when it gets bigger, it might look better. But for now yeah this is it uh <laughs> what more can i say okay so next up and unlike the paris del verde this plant was actually on my wish list for two or three years they're about um and i got it and i must say that i haven't stopped being in love with this plant this is such an elegant plant and that plant is the philodendron patriciae look at that oh and it's got this new leaf they come out in this coppery, bronzy type of color 
um, and they have this amazing sort of um, uh, belt like leaf and it's just gorgeous it hasn't disappointed me it's an absolutely it's just a pretty plug i think that's the only way to describe it. it's really really pretty guys listen so <laughs> i think i nearly killed this plant maybe i'm being a bit dramatic here uh not necessarily nearly killed it but i had it in my east facing window and it was getting a lot of morning sunlight and you can see on like this leaf over here it's like getting a little bit of that sort of yellow spotting and i was getting a bit nervous and i was like you know what philodendron Typically, in my experience, they don't need a tremendous amount of light. In fact, I would even go as far as saying that they don't even need bright, direct light because they they are an understory plant where, where they grow. They grow, you know, on trees. They're epiphytes. So these plants, they don't typically grow in high light conditions. So with that in mind, I moved it. I've actually got it in one of the shelves just behind me over here. Uh, and because of the way this plant grows, it's perfect for being like literally inside of the shelf <laughs> because it doesn't have any leaves that come out the back it all the, all the leaves sort of follow that one direction so it's just perfect um i have propagated this plant and i have shared it i'm really happy with this plant it just does its thing this pot that it's in is actually a bit deceiving it's in a much <laughs> much smaller pot um this is another plant that i think i almost killed from over watering um i had it in it was in pond as well i haven't had it in anything other than pond um, and when I took it out, I, re I realized that there was some root rot in there. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, I don't know what happened. I think I probably let it dry out too much and then watered it too heavily. Um, but since then, it's bounced back. It's been doing great. Uh, this new leaf, I can't wait for it to harden off. One of the things I really like about the uh, Patriciae is the way the leaves, they have this sort of bumpy texture when they harden off, especially when they become mature. It's almost like abs, but not in much the same way as a Anthurium vichia. It's just got that sort of more, yeah, it's got a bit more flow, a bit more elegance to it. I really, I'm really, really happy with this plant. And um, hopefully I'm gonna get it onto a moss ball one day, get some of those roots to sort of embed into that moss and just just have this plant just growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger because yeah it's 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 one that i really enjoy growing um and i recommend it to anyone who's looking for something uh belt belt leaf shaped <laughs> uh it's, it's it would just add to your collection it's just an absolutely gorgeous plant so yeah this is it the philodendron patriciae up next is another plant that i have no idea what it is but i can only speculate and it's this plant right here, the Philodendron Giganteum. Uh, it's, yeah, it was just a, literally another small cutting that my mom gave me, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um, and it's taken a long time to put out this leaf, actually. It was just, for the most part, in its caterpillar, and I had it in there for months and months and months, about three months, maybe four, uh, probably longer, actually. We might be talking about maybe you know coming up to six months now um and only in the last couple of weeks did it actually release this leaf so i think it's a philodendron giganteum but again if you do know what plant this is do let me know in the comments um and once it's put out some more leaves and have a better idea of what it is i'll come back with another video just to update you guys again so this plant i do enjoy it because it was a bit of a challenge to grow and it was sort of a waiting game to see what it is so because of that <laughs> i'm really happy to have it yeah the what i believe to be the philodendron giganteum okay okay we're getting bigger i hope you guys see what's going on here we're getting bigger and fuller um this plant isn't as full but it is definitely bigger and in much the same vein as the philodendron patriciae is this one right here look at that this banana leaf looking plant <laughs> ladies and gentlemen is the philodendron hesperocaspidon again another one that was on my list and i was so shocked i've got a uh, a, a list a favorite list of plants saved on my ebay um, and whenever anything comes up i get a notification i saw this i was like oh yeah i, I need this so I, I bid for it and i got it for a really 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 good price and look at the size of this Look at that, that's two hands, like it's huge. And it's a top cutting. So there's <laughs> there's a lot going on in this pot. Um, I just sort of tend to just chuck cuttings in here <laughs> whenever I feel like it. Um, so there are some, uh, 
there, there's some Skindapsis pictus uh, leaves or vines in here. And there's also my uh, avocado plant that's growing in here as well. But I just stuck it in here. Um, and I'm really nervous that if I pull it out, I might snap the only root that I have growing on this plant. Um, and the reason for that is, the reason why there's only one root is, I had it, it had quite a long node. Um, and I had it in some, I had it propagating in a pond and it was in a grow bag. So again, high, high, high humidity. We're talking about 100% humidity in that grow bag. Um, and the plant just seemed to be doing all right. Uh, it wasn't growing, uh, but I just imagined that there were going to be some roots. So I think it was last week I went in there and I sort of, I always do a little tug test to see if my plants are rooted. And this one felt like it was fine. So I decided, let me just have a, a, a better look. And I dug through the pond and I realized that the, the, the actual bottom part of the plant was actually rotting. So I was like, oh my God. So in fact, I had to pull out, I had to cut off a lot of the, uh, of the stem right up, right just underneath that one root, which is here. So can you see that? So that's the root just running along the side, just over here. And that's literally where the node starts. And that's where I had to cut it up to. So you can imagine what I was going to. I was like, if I lose this node, I lose any possibility of this plant rooting. Um, although there's another node up here where the new leaf is coming from, it's got no roots. So I have submerged it just in the hopes that if some roots do start to emerge, then, you know, they can start rooting into the water and I can then, you know, uh, put it into a substrate to cover that node as well. But since that time, that root has grown this whole length. So this entire root is new and that's in the past week. So that's good news. That's good news. Um, I really would hate to see this plant die. Oh, I just, I really like it and I think it will complement the Patriciae because I think um, these two are very, very similar in terms of the way they they grow that long belt like leaf and it's so big like why not <laughs> why wouldn't i want it so yeah that's it this is the philodendron heterocaspidon an amazing plant so up next is this plant right here the philodendron melanochrysum this was the it plant back in 2020 and 2021 um not so much now uh, <laughs> this plant has dramatically dropped in price when this plant is mature mm, 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 it is a specimen it is long it is dark it is juicy it is everything you want for your plant it's a very sort of gothic looking plant very dark it's almost menacing looking and this i've had this plant for over a year in my collection and i kid you not the leaves haven't gotten that big so much like the paris do verde this is a plant that I was really enjoying before I got it because I saw like the potential this plant had, but it just hasn't really been doing much. And I've had it growing in pond, I've had it growing in water, I've had it growing in you know all sorts of substrate. Now it's growing in soil, and I've got it on this branch that I collected from the forest near my house from a fallen tree, um, and in the hopes that it will attach itself to this and at least look like something. Unfortunately, it's not really doing much um, for me, but you know, what can you do? But yeah, this is it. This is the philodendron melanochrysum, also known as the black gold philodendron, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, I mean, the issue I have with this plant is that it requires a lot of humidity. When you're propagating this plant and you have it in a, in a grow tent or in a, in a prop box or in a, you know, a baggie, whatever, this plant grow so quickly the leaves unfurl perfectly they actually size up quite nicely but unfortunately i don't have the environment where i can provide this plant with that sort of level of humidity as it grows because it does grow quite quickly and as soon as i pull it out of that sort of high high humidity environment like we're talking 80 and above um it just it just starts to misbehave like the leaves won't unfold look at that so you have damaged leaves um, this one over here just sort of aborted that leaf. Uh, this one right here in the center is crisped up. <laughs> it has crisped up and, you know, it's, it's going to go out very, very soon. You know, I, I just haven't got time. I haven't got the time or patience to, to care for this plant. I'll, I'll just leave it. I might propagate it and sell it on. I know some people really do enjoy growing this plant. But for me, I think I've had enough of it. <laughs> Is that bad to say that I've had enough of a plant? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think um, 
I don't think in this plant game, I think we should we should know our boundaries, know our limits, and work towards that. This plant is well and truly outside of that. So, um, yeah, for now, I'm, I'm just going to keep it, just keep it alive. But I'm thinking I'm going to start selling it off very, very soon, or even just gifting it away to people that really want to take on the challenge of growing this plant. But yeah, that's it. It's the Philodendron Milano Chrysum. Yo, it's one of those hot days again today. <laughs> All right, so next up is a plant that I'm not too sure what the ID is. I'm not going to lie to you. It's one of two plants. Um, and hopefully you guys can help me with this. If you do know what it is, please do let me know in the comments uh, below. Uh, and it's this plant right here. There we go. Look at, ugh, look at it. I think it's either a philodendron uh, jungle boogie or a philodendron narrow. It's got that sort of, how would you describe this shape? It's got that sort of jagged edge to it. It almost looks like a, a Rambo knife. If you've ever seen Rambo, it looks like one of those knives as the leaves mature. Um, this plant is also, it takes the crown in being my thirstiest plant. Literally, look at the amount of water I've got in this. Hang on, can you see that? So it's about halfway full. Um, so quite a lot of water in here. And I'll come back in a day and a half. So tomorrow will be fine. I watered it today. Um, and then the day after that, water's gone. And I'm not talking about it's still a little bit wet in the pot. I'm talking about gone bone dry. <laughs> I think the reason for that is because there are three small uh, plants that I have here. And I got each of them from my mother. Um, and I, I didn't really know what they were. I think she has a bigger plant um, and it's definitely got, got more of this sort of shape. And as the plant matures, these edges do get a lot more jagged um, and a lot more like the frequency of the jaggedness of this plant is, is sort of closer. It gets a bit tighter. So it almost looks like a sword. Yeah, so I have three plants in here. Um, I propagated them directly into this perlite and they seem to be loving life. Look at that. They've got roots on the bottom. Uh, it's only been in here for maybe two months and already I need to upsize this pot. And I'm, my concern is if I upsize this, I'm going to have to do it again very, very soon. <laughs> and that's fine. I don't really mind too much because um, it's just, it's such a thirsty plant. So I think something like this might even benefit from being in soil actually, because the soil probably less likely to dry out as quickly as this one is. But, you know, the, the, the good thing is, I, you know, I, I can sort of judge it. I know that it's not going to get root rot because it dries out so quickly. It's really thirsty. Um, and I don't want to risk putting it into soil, into a really sort of uh, moisture retaining substrate and risk it sort of just toppling over and dying on me. But yeah, it's a really, really cute plant. Um, I didn't think I would like it because I'm not, I haven't been a huge fan of that sort of bird's nest uh shape type of plants you know you have it in the ethereums and you have it in the philodendron um however uh, i didn't think i was going to be a fan of it but now that i've been growing it and just seeing how quickly it sizes up and how it the leaf sort of morphs from a simple leaf like this one all the way up to this huge gigantic thing and it's not even half the size of what it would be could be um as it ages uh, it's really exciting. I really, I really am enjoying this plant. I love the the color. It's got a sort of a, almost a blue tinge to it, uh, in much the same way the Philodendron Spiritus Santi has. And yeah, it's just it's just a really really cool plant. But if anyone knows what it is, do let me know in the comments because I'm really interested in finding out uh, more about this plant and trying to give it the best environment that I possibly can. But yeah, this is it. This is the Philodendron Narrow or Philodendron. Jungle Boogie. Next up is the only variegated philodendron that I own, and it's the philodendron bowmark variegata or variegated bowmark. Look at that. Oh, such a gorgeous leaf. I think this one over here is my favorite one. Look at that. Ooh, wee. So, ah, oh, the texture is gorgeous. It looks like an artwork. An art piece is really, really cool. So this plant I got from Indonesia at the same time as I got my huge philodendron mad rag or, you know, magnificent cross regal. I'm trying to get that name to stick. Um, and my philodendron luxurians cross with radicans. Um, and I got this one at the same time. It was very, very small. I think it had about four leaves when I first got it. And it's grown to this so far. 
quite a big plant. Uh, it's getting quite bushy. I think it, it should probably be a little bit bigger than it is now. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I think it's because uh, I, I don't know. What did I do? I think it's, again, it's just a case of overwatering. I think the water level was way too high. Um, and I'm, 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 luckily, I picked up on it quite quickly. But I think that sort of paused its growth but it started to bounce back it's got lots of new growth right one right you can see two right here you can see some again just on the edges what i really like about this plant is that it's got no respect for a growth point none at all it's just like i'm gonna grow wherever i grow from <laughs> and literally just look at that in on one branch you can see there's about four or five different growth points and literally the plant the plant is so unruly just grows from anywhere and I really enjoy that. I really, really enjoy that. Um, I wish it had a bit more variegation on it, but beggars can't be choosers. I know when I got this plant, one of the four cuttings that I had um, was fully green, which is good anyway, or one part of it was fully green. What it means is that that green part of the plant can uh, sustain the variegated parts because, you know, they don't uh, photosynthesize as much as the Others. So something else that I've noticed is that the philodendron uh, Paraiso verde and the bow mark have a very very similar leaf shape Very very similar and it's another reason why because this one doesn't have the variegation that I really enjoy it Just doesn't make sense to keep it because it looks so similar to this So um, yeah, another reason why this one this one has got to go. But yes, this is it. This is the philodendron bow mark variegata up next is this plant right here my philodendron mykins it's getting really really full now really really bushy so i'm really enjoying it it was really slacking and, and lagging behind before you can see a lot of bare sort of vines over here but since i moved into this room and it gets that direct morning sun it's really starting to fill up now and it's starting to almost climb back on itself um and and, and getting really really full as i've said i bought it as like a, like two leaves like literally two two leaves two nodes right um and i stuck it in some pond it grew i would propagate put it back and now i've got this i haven't got loads of vines in here it's maybe one two three four five maybe about six six vines so it's still loads of space in there for more um but that's sort of the the, the name of the game with this one i'm just sort of letting it grow i cut it back put it back into the pot and then hopefully one day I'm going to have that full pot that's draping from all angles. <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping for at least. Yeah, this plant has been uh, a steady grower. I can't complain much about this plant. It just does its thing. It really does. You just sort of make sure that it's watered when it needs to. You can let, you can let the pond go completely dry. You can treat it as a plant in a normal substrate, almost like soil. Just wait for it to dry and then water it back. And it, it, it will just do its thing, as I say. Um, this is not a plant I worry about too much. It hasn't had any pest pre pressures, uh, nothing at all. Um, lately, I have been struggling to get some of the cuttings to survive in here. But it's not because of my fault. It's just because of where it is. It doesn't get any light from on top. So it's hard for that leaf to sort of carry on growing. So you can see here, this one right here uh, has been trying to push out this leaf for a long long time and it's just not doing much because it just hasn't got that energy to do it um but yeah that's the only thing i've had but apart from that it's been a really really easy plant to grow i definitely recommend it to anybody it's it is a velvet leaf and you would think that you would have the same issue growing this plant as as you would with the with the melanocrysum because you know that velvet leaf it needs a lot more humidity to unfurl and stuff but it doesn't have it at all at all um, and it just gets on with the job and that's why i really enjoy growing this plant and yeah that's it i don't think there's any more to say on this one it's a gorgeous one really cool really interesting looking plant and definitely one you should add to your collection the philodendron mykins the next three plants are all crawling philodendron and the first one of the bunch is this one right here the philodendron pastazanum oh wait look at that it's a really gorgeous plant. You can kind of see what I'm working with <laughs> over here. Uh, the plants are really sort of stretching downwards, trying to catch the light because it's in quite a busy sort of plant corner over here. So it has to find the light where it can and it's definitely 
doing that. And you can see right over here, it's got a new leaf that's unfurling. So super, super exciting. Lots and lots of roots. I've literally just noticed that I haven't really gone back there and tried to look at the, uh, the root situation uh, since I've moved them all into Lekka. So they're doing really, really well. I can't complain. Um, this one, I'm trying to train it to sort of go back down because it was sort of crawling up because when I first got this plant, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I didn't do my research, I thought this was a climbing philodendron. So I was trying to force it to grow upwards. I remember the first leaf sort of root straight across and I forced it to grow up. Um, and now I'm paying for that. So the plant is now sort of got this arch, but it's starting to go back down and it's going to crawl across this pot. So it's got lots of space to go. So at the moment, it's sort of here. We've got all of that. So by the time it gets to the end of the pot, I imagine it's going to be a huge, huge plant. And yeah, it's just another one of those plants I don't have to worry too much about. Uh, I just have it on the shelf and it just does its thing. The only thing I would say is that this plant, I find of all my philodendron, uh, is susceptible to spider mites. So you can see this leaf over here. It's got a little bit of that yellowing edge. I don't know if you can, if the camera will pick it up. Uh, but it does have a little bit of that yellowing edge and that's because I found out that it had a couple of spider mites. I'm just looking again to see if there's any on here. And I don't think so. Um, and I put it on a sort of a weekly uh, pesticide regime, more like insecticide or soap, neem oil. And uh, I have actually used a chemical pesticide as well. So I used that one like maybe twice a month when I was going through this process. And then every week I would then use the insecticide or soap and neem oil. And that seemed to work really, really well. Yeah, so a really, really interesting plant. Really, really glad to have this one in my collection. I'm just hoping that it will size up very, very soon. The Philodendron Pastazano. This Philodendron, I got at the same time as the Pastazano. Literally the same, from the same seller. They have both of these plants on sale. I've decided to pick them both up. And it's so pretty. Just look at the leaves. Ah. Oh so gorgeous i love the silveriness on that leaf look at that ah i love it i love it um i really enjoy growing this plant i think of all of the crawling philodendron that i have i think this is my favorite it's just so pretty to look at it's had it's given me no trouble at all it's just been really reliable in terms of its growth this one did uh sort of get a bit smaller but that was the first leaf that came out since i moved this plant uh from uh, pond into Lekka. So I think it went through a little bit of a rebellious phase and decided, you know what, I'm only going to give you a small leaf. <laughs> um, but yeah, what can I say? It's, it's, it's really it's really easy to grow. Similar to the Pastazanum, we've got some good roots that are developing nice, thick, juicy roots. Not as many as the Pastazanum, I must say, but certainly thicker. So yeah, it's, it's, it, it's really coming along nicely. Uh, it did lose a leaf since I transferred it. It had two growth points, this plant. Um, this main stem over here, and it had a separate little one at the back. Uh, unfortunately, that leaf fell off, um, and any new growth has actually dried up because this is like the furthest away from the sunlight. So this is really, really tucked away um, and gets little to no sunlight. So that's why I sort of lost that leaf. But yeah, it's still, it's still pushing on. Um, it hasn't put out any new leaves for this summer so far, which is a bit of a shame. We did give this one in spring or early, earlier in the year around maybe February. Um, it gave me this leaf, but nothing yet. So it, I can see that it's still putting out some roots. It's not as well rooted as the other one. So maybe that's the reason for that. But yeah, it's, apart from that, it's been really, really cool to grow it. I just love it. It just looks like a work of art. And that's it. This is the Philodendron Plowmanii. The final crawling philodendron, and I'm sure you guessed it, <laughs> the most popular one is the philodendron gloriosum. <laughs> Look at that. I remember when I got this plant. This was probably the first, the first rare plant that I bought. Uh, it's not as rare now, uh, but it was in 2020 when I got it as a single leaf from France, believe it or not. So this was even before... Brexit actually so it might was it 20 I think it might have been 2020 um, or very very t early 2021 when I got this plant it was a really really small leaf so you know it has really sized up since then unfortunately that small leaf has is, is no longer with us but what we do have in its place 
is a brand new leaf that's coming out over here. Look at that. I'm hoping that it's going to be around this sort of size. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. You can see definitely there's some yellowing going on with this leaf. And this was another one that got struck down by spider mites um, as well. Uh, but that's now gone. So unfortunately, you can't get rid of that yellowing once it's come. So just got to live with it. And that's fine. That is literally what life's about with these plants. You get them, you get pests, they go, you move on. That's it. <laughs> you deal with it and you move on. Yeah, so we have a new leaf that's coming out. And I'm hoping that it's going to be much bigger than the, than the rest. Um, in terms of roots, what are we working with? Ooh, look at that long one over there. That one is super, super duper long. Can you see that running across? Literally, it's like get, getting to the end of the pot already. The Gloriosum and the Plowmanii aren't as rooted as the uh, Pastazanum, but yeah, it's still it's still pushing on, it's still doing its thing. I love these pots, such a good find. <laughs> they really are. Um, they just make sense for crawling philodendron for real. Very small, compact shape but very long as well. It's literally a plastic tub for like um, your stationery and stuff like that. And I decided to repurpose it for this project and it's been doing me very, very well. I'm really enjoying them. So that's it, this is the Philodendron Gloriosum. And the final and largest Philodendron in my collection is this bad boy over here. Let me pick it up. There we have it guys. This is my Philodendron Imperial Red. It is a huge, huge plant. Absolutely massive. Look at the size of that. So heavy as well. This one is growing in Lekka and <laughs> it feels like it's growing in, in something much heavier than Lekka actually. This is one of the first philodendron that I think I ever bought. It was quite, quite large when I got it, but the good thing is it hasn't slowed down since then. It's just been doing great. Um, to be fair, when I first got this plant, it was in uh, in the original soil for a long time and it actually stored its growth um, for a while actually until I put it into Lekka and it just sort of went it just got a whole new lease on life and it just wouldn't stop growing this summer has been a great summer for it most of these leaves are actually brand new so let me just try to work out so this leaf is obviously one of the old ones that started to die back so I've cut it down this one of the old ones this is one of the old these two over here are some of the older ones. Uh, but everything else, everything else is brand new this summer. And I, <laughs> or this, this year anyway, I should say. It's been, it's been great. It's gone into overdrive and I couldn't be happier. Just look at that. Just a statement plant in its own right. Can you believe it? So pretty, just so striking, much like the Melanochrysum. A, it's got that gothic look to it just because of those really really dark leaves you can see where it gets that red color from or the red in its name imperial red the, the leaves do have a bit of a red tinge to them when they first emerge and the petioles as well i am dropping water all over the place <laughs> oh my goodness well yes this is it guys this is the final philodendron in my collection the Philodendron Imperial Red. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And as always, keep planting. <music>